ظهر عندكم كده؟ ظهر يا فندم فول سكرين فول سكرين يا دكتور اوف بقى ظهر كده؟ فول سكرين اتفضل يا فندم اتفضل يا فندم اتفضل يا فندم النهارده هتكلم على الالجوريزم فور تريتمنت اوف فراكشر نيك فيمر وهركز اكتر على الانترا كابسولر فراكشرز Intracapsular neck fracture are common in the elderly population. Incidence double with each decade beyond the age of 50. However, femoral neck fracture are less common in physiologically active patients and represent approximately 5% of the total. The fracture pattern seen in young adults is different from that of elderly people. Elderly patients with poor bone quality, low energy trauma usually produce an intertrochanteric fracture or a subcapital neck fracture. While in young adults with better bone quality and high energy trauma mechanism, the injury usually causes a basic cervical or more distal neck fracture. Despite known limitations, femoral neck fractures in elderly patients are frequently described using the garden classification. Although achieving anatomic reduction and stable internal fixation is imperative, other treatment variables, such as the time of surgery, the role of capsulotomy, and the fixation method are debated. Despite known limitation, femoral neck fracture in elderly patients are frequently described using the garden's classification, vulgus impacted or incomplete, complete non-displaced, complete partial displacement, and complete full displacement. And, and the Powell classification, the angle describes the vertical shear vector. In Powell one, the fracture line is less than 30 degrees from the horizontal, while in Powell two, less, which is less stable, the angle is between 30 degrees and 50 degrees, while in Powell three is more than 50 degrees from the horizontal. And it is more difficult to treat with increased risk of fixation failure, malunion, nonunion, and osteonecrosis. Garden classification is not as useful for describing the femoral neck treatment in young adults. Power classification is more descriptive. The fracture part can indicate the relative stability of the fracture and can predict the difficulty of obtaining stable fixation. Principles and management treatment algorithms. Patients over the age of 70 years are considered elderly. Patients younger than 60 years are considered young. Patients between the age of 60 and 70, just young or elderly according to their physiological age. The goals of treatment in young adult, the most important is to preserve the head, to achieve union, and to achieve a stable fixation, and to prevent osteonecrosis. While for elderly patients, the goals include restoring mobility as soon as possible, with weight bearing as tolerated, minimizing complications associated with prolonged bed rest, so preserving the femoral head is less important. So as I have said, below the age of 60, you have to preserve the head and do internal fixation. Also, in my practice, the age between 50 and 60, I'll go directly for primary total hip. And the consensus between surgeons agreed with this practice to do a total hip replacement. Fracture-related pattern of femoral neck fracture leading to the treatment policy. As I have said, the undisplaced fracture must be fixed with three cannulated screws in an inverted triangle configuration to avoid subtrochanteric fracture. And the first screw must rest on the medial, medial cortex to prevent uh, various displacement. While displaced fracture, 
if we can achieve a good closed reduction, we go for internal fixation using three screws. If we are unable to achieve a good reduction or an anatomical reduction, which is very important, we have to do an open reduction using the Watson-Jones approach and to achieve an anatomical reduction and to fix it with three canalated screws or with a DHS with two screws. While for the extra capsule fracture, we will talk about it in the next uh, presentation. Impacted fractures are reported to have less incidence of non-union. Impacted fracture develop less segmental collapse in avascular necrosis of the head. Crawford reported 12% of evascular necrosis in 50 impacted fractures out of 339 femoral neck fracture with an overall. Treatment for patient below the age of 60, non-displaced fracture, close the reduction and the internal fixation use three canalated screws. Same, sometimes we may, we may use a force a screw if the posterior coat is severely comminuted, but not two screws. Displaced fraction, close the reduction if failed, open reduction through the Watson Jones approach or the Smith Peterson and internal fixation using three canalated screws. Close the reduction is attempted by inflexing the hip 45 degrees with the hip slightly abducted then externally and internally rotating the leg while applying longitudinal traction. Only anatomic reduction is accepted. Otherwise, we have to proceed to open reduction. This is the way of the closed reduction. Surgical approach. After the patient is medically optimized, surgical fixation should proceed. The injured limb should be left shortened and externally rotated while surgery is waited. Intracapsular pressure is increased when the hip is in extension and internal rotation and decreased significantly when the patient is in flexion and external rotation. Preoperative skin traction is ineffective in decreasing the pain. The implant shall provide stability, prevent displacement in varus, prevent displacement in retroversion, and prevent rotational micro-movement. Allow axial centering along the implant without penetrating into the joint. In case of delayed union and non-union, migration into the joint of the pelvis should not be possible. Fixation using the canalated screws, three canalated screws parallel to one another and perpendicular to the fracture line, obtain optimal compression at the fracture side. Screws should be in an inverted triangle configuration, as I told before, the proximal screws and one distal screw. So this distal configuration, one screw distal configuration. The most inferior screw should rest on the medial femoral neck of the distal fragment to resist various displacement. The second should be placed just posteriorly along the neck and the third should be placed superiorly. <coughs> As regards the fixation, no advantage to more than three screws. Uniform compression across the fracture. Fixation most dependent on bone density. Location, avoid posterior and the superior quadrant. Blood supply, the cut out. Biomechanical, biomechanical advantage to inferior calcar screw. Dynamic screw for the basic cervical femoral neck fracture, the fracture variant for which a DHS will provide more distal fixation. Good for fracture with more vertical fracture line. Can lift the screw will prevent fracture impaction, leading to non-union. Sacrifice large amount of bone. Anti-rotation screws is often needed, although it is not important. As regards the post-operative care, DVT prophylaxis for four to six weeks, two touch weight bearing with crutches or a walker for 12 weeks, monthly radiographs are taken to assess for healing 
and any evidence of femoral head osteonecrosis. So this is a very good test or investigation for to predict if there is osteonecrosis or not. It's called the SPEC, the single photon emission computerized tomography. It's very valuable, especially within the first three weeks. If the intake is less than 90 degrees, there is increased risk of osteonecrosis because the MRI is not a good predictor of osteonecrosis. Treatment of patient above the age of 70, hemiarthroplasty, unipolar or bipolar according to the activity of the patient and his functional demands, total hip replacement, and these uh, arthroplasty decrease the risk of the second operation, allow rapid mobilization and better function. Hemiarthroplasty is a preferred treatment for low functioning community or nursing home ambulatory patients. Treatment of patient between 60 and 7, 70 years. The trend in the treatment algorithm is to perform total hip, especially if they are active and have high functional demands. Boundary and Associates published meta-analysis comparing internal fixation with arthroplasty for the treatment of displaced femoral neck fracture. They reviewed 14 studies with a total of 1,933 patients. They have concluded that performing arthroplasty reduced the risk of second operation as a result of non-union and evascular necrosis. However, infection rate, blood loss, operation time were reduced. Blomfett and Associates, the rate of reoperation was 47% for internal fixation and 4% for total hip replacement. Heating and colleagues reported reoperation rates of 39% for the fixation group and 5% for the arthroplasty group. There, is, there are two main complications, femoral head osteonecrosis and non-union. For if the patient develops osteonecrosis, for the early, we go directly for total hip replacement. In young patient, in my, in my practice, I do total hip replacement directly. But you have to say osteotomy to unload segmented area of collapse, core decompression, vascularized bone grafting, hemi-resurfacing of the femoral head, and in my opinion, total hip is the best solution. The amount of initial fracture displacement, the disruption of the blood supply at the time of fracture, the quality of the fracture reduction, the post-reduction malalignment, the time between fracture and reduction predisposed to the osteonecrosis. Although there is a recent paper showed that fracture neck of the femur was an emergency few years ago and must be done within the first eight to 12 hours. A recent study showed that if you do the operation after 12 hours, there is no differences in, in producing the osteonecrosis. Non-union occurs in 10 to 30%. Valgus producing osteotomy, converting the shearing force to compressive force or a total hip replacement. In my practice, I do total hip replacement because I don't believe that it will unite and it will change the biomechanics of the hip. This is a case of non-union using the three screws and uh, we treated it uh, doing an, uh, a total hip replacement. Current controversy, the role of capsulotomy. A theoretical advantage to performing capsulotomy is to reduce the intracapsular pressure, resulting in improving the blood flow to the femoral head and may reduce the femoral head ischemia. No evidence suggests that complications are related to performing an open anterior capsulotomy, directly visualizing the capsule and performing capsulotomy. Timing of surgery. Advocates of early surgery suggest that the main advantage of prompt reduction and display, uh, of displaced femoral neck fracture include unkinking of the vessels and performing intracapsular decompression to, re to remove the offending agent of increased intracapsular pressure, minimizing the risk of femoral head osteonecrosis. Until conclusive data 
are available, it is better to perform surgery on an urgent basis within eight to 24 hours. Thank you very much. Any question? Thank you so much, uh, Professor Rauf Al Abbasi, for this uh, very interesting talk, sir. Uh, Dr. Ahmed Sheikh, any questions for uh, Professor Rauf? I have questions, sir. Yeah. Oh, Dr. Bahadi. Yeah. Dr. Rauf, thank you for your uh, presentation, a very nice presentation. What about these uh, new devices now available for in the market about uh, this uh, from the AO? Did you use it or uh, recommend what it? Devices? What devices? This is an, a, a small, a small plate, triangular, and with the three screws. Yes, I prefer the carrelated screws. They give better fixation and stable fixation, if if done in the proper way. Uh, do, you, do you prefer using a washer or not? No, I don't use washers. You don't. Uh, one question from one of our colleagues here, Prof. Of uh, any tips and tricks to avoid. AVN uh, when you use Smith Peterson approach. What do you mean? What do you mean? Uh, I think you ask about when you are doing Smith. When doing an oper when, an op when doing an open reduction, you are yes. away from the ascending branches of the posterior circumflex artery, so of the middle circumflex artery. So there is no risk through the Watson Jones or the Smith Peterson. It's the lateral approach. Yeah. Um, another question. Um, um, thanks, sir. Why in young patients not prefer to do subtrochantric valgus osteotomy? Because it, usually I have uh, presented a case a uh, few weeks ago in the clinical meeting of Bana University, a patient 25 years with fractured neck of the femur, which was fixed with three carinated screws. Unfortunately, non-union occurred, then uh, a valgus osteotomy was done, failed, revised, failed, revised again with uh, PFN, a pr proximal femoral nail, and five years now, and a, and a lot of money spent for this operation, and the patient now is crippled. So in my experience, it's better once non-union, I go to total hip replacement. Nowadays, the new uh, uh, hips can can stand for over three, uh, 30 years. So why not to provide a better life quality? And this is the aim of total hip replacement. Um, what? But if, if done properly, of course. This is my opinion. It may be wrong, but this is my opinion and the consensus. Of, uh, Any other questions, Dr. Ahmed? Hello. 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 I think uh, one last question regarding the capsulotomy during uh, doing ORIF. Is it, uh, do you do T shaped or just simple T -shaped, in the general T -shaped. In the capsule? And the T, the, 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 ver the vertical part so, uh, along the neck and the T along the trochanteric line. Yeah. Under image, of and, course, uh, when after doing... fixation. Yeah. You don't start with- uh, What about hematoma yeah. evacuation? What'd you say? Hematoma, okay. evacuation. Uh, hematoma evacuation? Yes. If you are doing closed fixation of neck femur, do you do it? Yes. Or closed, closed, yes, I do it. Uh, My aspiration. I think, uh, we're done with questions. Okay. Okay, Dr. Ahmed? Yeah. yeah. Thank Thanks you so all. much, uh, Professor Aouf, for your uh, presentation. Thank you so You're much, welcome. sir. Now we will. Uh,